Hello there YouTube, another video from me. Today's topic, top 10 sci-fi authors or books, the top 10 books of my top 10 sci-fi authors. Um, I have quite a large collection, so I've had to sift through those and pick my choice books. Rules are simple, one book per author. And we'll start with number 10. Number 10. My first book uh, in this in my top ten is Strata by Terry Pratchett. Everybody knows him for his fantasy. Uh, this is actually a sci-fi book. Um, it's based on the principle of planets being terraformed um, by humans with extremely long lengths of life, so they can live to three, four hundred years. And it's a uh, it's um, it looks at the nature of archaeology of the future and how planet builders can go around. A little bit of blurb off the back. The excavation showed that the fossilised pleosaur had been holding a placard which read end nuclear testing now. That was nothing unusual. But then came a discovery of something which did intrigue Kin Arad. A flat earth was something new. And it's basically a couple of terraformers go around looking for a flat earth. It's a very, very good read. I do recommend it. My next book is by TJ Bass. It's called God Whale. This is number nine. Um, interesting concept. I do like... Um, books and films based underwater, particularly submarine films. This one is a rather interesting mix of um, the nature of humankind and uh, a bit of sci-fi. Anyway, the blurb off the back is, she was a harvester, a vast plankton rake without a crop, abandoned by Earth society when the seas died, part whale, part ship and well over 600 feet long. She was left to rot in a sterile ocean. But suddenly, after centuries, the sea was no longer dead. And Rukau, if I got that one right, stirred from her slumber. She, was, she would set out again to serve mankind, but mankind had forgotten all about Rukau. Basically about an old ship waking up in the middle of the ocean. Pretty good read. Right, my next book, number eight in my selection, is um, a selection of books, actually. It's, um, I do believe, four books, but it's uh, Cities in Fight by James Blish. Um, very interesting concepts about escaping the uh, destruction of the universe. But it's basically humanity's managed to escape from Earth by floating cities into space with specialised engines. Uh, Incredibly interesting concept. Um, I see if there's any blurb on the back. There's no blurb on the back, so we'll have a look inside just to give you a taste. Nope, there's no blurb inside to give you a taste, which is a bit of a downer. But yeah, uh, one of the interesting concepts is that each city state or each city is at war with each other. Very interesting concept. Next one is, um, this is number seven. Yep, we're on number seven. Um, this is uh, Shadow of the Torturer and the series that comes from this uh, by Gene Wolfe. Um, yep, it's based, I don't know if it's based on this Earth future or a Earth future, but um, very, very interesting, sort of like a mix of sci-fi and fantasy and old world a uh, bit of a off the back is the earth is old and the sun is dying in a great citadel of the city imperishable severin apprentice to the torturers guild betrays his oath exiled severin begins his phantasmagorical or phantasmagoric odyssey through the dark and perilous world of the deep distant future another good read Right, my next one, 
number six um, is a Grid Bears Eon. Um, this is uh, another interesting read. If you've ever read any of uh, R.C. Clarke's uh, Rendezvous with Rama series, it's very, very similar concept. And both of them are just as good as each other. Um, I'll give you a bit of blurb off the back. Above our planet hangs a hollow stone. Vast is the imagination of man. The inner dimensions are at odds with the outer. There are different chambers to the breach, some containing deserted cities. The furthest cha chamber contains the greatest mystery ever to confront the stone scientists. But the stone is not an alien structure. It comes from the future of our humanity. Tombstone or milestone, the wall that breaks out on Earth beneath its presence seems to bear witness to its prowess as Oracle. Yep, definitely recommend. Now, uh, recently I've been getting into my steampunk um, and I've got another book here. This is number five. This is Chris Wooding, Retribution Falls and the two books that follow that. Um, brilliant, brilliant book. I've got to recommend this. Uh, it really had me going from page one to the last page all the way through. It's steampunky. I don't know if it's based on this Earth, this future Earth, or it's based on a another Earth or a planet that's been colonised by Earth, um, but it's definitely worth looking into. Bit of blurb off the back. Darian Frey is the roguish captain of the Kitty J and the leader of a small, highly dysfunctional group of layabouts. Frey and his gun-run contraband rob ships and generally make a nuisance of themselves, all while avoiding the Coalition Navy frigates. And it's basically piracy of the seas but in the air with airships and it's actually pretty good. Right, uh, next one, uh, number four is I have to have an Asimov book in my choice of books. Um, I picked The Bicentennial Man. Uh, if you've seen the movie, forget the movie. It's very well done, but forget the movie, read the book. Um, I like Asimov. I had to really struggle with choice on this one so I just went with this one because quite a lot of people can get hold of this one um, but a bit of blurb off the back Andrew was one of Earth's first house robots clean smoothly designed and functional but when Andrew started to develop special talents which exceeded the confines of his allotted positronic pathways he abandoned his domestic duties in favor of more intellectual pursuits as time passed Andrew acquired knowledge, feeling, and ambitions way beyond anything he had experienced by any other mechanical man. And he found himself launched into a career which would bring him to fame, fortune, and danger. For a robot that wants to be human must also be prepared to die. It's a very sad story. It's, it's, got, it's got a lot of ups, but in the end, it's a very, very sad story and definitely worth reading. Right, as I said, uh, with Greg Bear's Eon, um, number three is an R.C. Clarke book. Now, I could have picked Rendezvous of Rama or Rama Revealed or any, um, or any 2001 Space Odyssey. They're all good books, but this one gets me every time, and it's Ghosts from the Grand Banks. Um, it's based now, but was written in probably the 1990s. I think it was written in the 1990s. We'll have a look. 1990. Well, it's written in the late 80s, but it's based as for now. And basically, it's about trying to raise the Titanic and failing miserably. Um, it's the last couple of pages that get you. Um, it's, a, it's a very sad story in the end but I definitely do recommend it. A bit of blurb off the, uh, the back. It is 2010. It's just two years' time. It'll be the centennial, the event that haunted the world, the sinking of the Titanic. The remains of, uh, of what was once the world's greatest ocean liner lie four kilometres down on the Grand Banks of the Atlantic Ocean, an endless reminder of the of frailty of man's technology in the face of natural perils. But 100 years on, the urge to raise the wreck is irresistible. 
Um, yeah. Read it. Now I'll get into my last two. Number two. Um, I read this donkeys years ago when I was very, very young. Um, I remembered it, but couldn't remember the titles. It took me years to find it again. But it's um, John Brosson, if that's the right name, The Sky Lords and the other books that come with it. Um, I like submarines. I like airships. As I say, um, I've always been a big fan of airships. And so this one just got me. And it's basically a post-apocalyptic war where genetics has been used, chemicals have been used, there's been all sorts of um, things going on. And there is now a world dominated by the ground people, which are people who are basically subservient to the Sky Lords, who are cities based on massive airships. Um, the story is quite incredible. Um, a little bit of blurb off the back. The Gene Wars have turned Earth into a blighted wasteland. Mile-long airships patrol the skies, extracting cri crippling tribute from the scattered ground communities. Threatened by mutant vegetation and predatory creatures, forced to the brink of starvation by the Sky Lords, Minerva, a form of feminist utopia, has had enough. Its rebellion is swiftly crushed and Jan Dorvin, uh, a Minervan warrior is winched aboard a Skylord towards the fate towards a fate worse than death for as a ground dweller and slave but above all as a woman she is now regarded as the lowest form of humanity and is consigned to a life spent serving the sexual appetites of male slaves but no Minervan could ever be kept a slave for very long definitely recommend that one Now I've had all those and I'm missing a couple of authors and we're at number one now. So who could be the one that I'm thinking of? Well, you've got things like Jules Verne and you've got similar genres, all done with old sci-fi and there are plenty of other sci-fi authors out there that are pretty good. But I couldn't have a collection without having H.G. Wells. Simple as. War of the Worlds. This is a very old school copy of a book that I managed to get hold of. But you know War of the Worlds. It's a simple premise. Um, the, you've got 1953 remake of War of the Worlds, which is rubbish. You've got the um, Cruise version, which is absolutely awful. And then you've got uh, Independence Day, which is actually a very good version. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, there's comic books and whatnot devoted to this. Um, this particular one. Simple blurb. The Martians invade the Earth, bringing with them some fantastic and amazing weapons, including cranes that walk on stilts and heat ray that kills with it from a distance. A roaring wave of fear sweeps across the country, and London is left in ruins. The most thrilling of all H.G. Wells' scientific romances. It's actually a very good book. I don't need to say any more. That's my number one.